Hello, Operara fans. I'm David Parry, and I'm speaking to you from my hidey hole in rural Norfolk, keeping out of trouble as much as possible. Um, I've been asked to select this month's Opera Rara recording of the month for October, and I'm very honoured and delighted to do it. Uh, it has been suggested I might select one of my own recordings. There are quite a lot of them to choose from, of course. That's fine with me, I could do that, of course, but I'm, uh, how shall I say, I never listen to my own recordings, practically. It seems a slightly narcissistic thing, narcissistic thing to do. Um, but I can remember a few of them. And, of course, I remember the wonderful times we've had at making these recordings over the years. So much delight and um, pleasure and artistic stimulation with some really wonderful artists. Um, I really would like to select something that would have meant something special to my dear friend, the late Patrick Schmid, who was the artistic director of Opera Arara, the first artistic director of Opera Arara, and a co-founder, of course, uh, with whom I worked for years and years and years. He actually started me off as a repetiteur for the company and then assisting on recordings and, uh, and productions because there used to be quite a lot of productions. Um, those days are long past, of course. And um, then I was gradually promoted to conducting my own um, recordings. So I thought, first of all, that it would be nice to, to do something which we had been working on together uh, when he died so suddenly in 2006. There were plans for at least two projects, uh, which I then completed. Entre nous of Offenbach, the compilation, and um, Las, and then, yes, La Serie de, what is it called? No, Alessandro Nelle India, there's so many. Alessandro Nelle India, Pacini. And the Entre nous, it's a compilation, didn't seem quite the right thing, and Alessandro Nelle India, I'm sure a lot of people really love it. Um, so then I thought, well, maybe it could be the first recording we made of complete opera we made together, Emilia de Liverpool. Um, but it really isn't my favourite. Um, and also, I didn't conduct it terribly well, to be honest. Um, so then I thought, well, actually, we did record Caterina Cornaro because Patrick loved the opera so much and had always wanted to record it. We discussed it many times, actually. And um, then finally we did manage to get round to recording it. Um, and I hadn't listened to it since 2012 when it came out. So uh, it was wonderful to hear it again. And I have to say, I really enjoyed it. And I'm so pleased that I was asked to do this and uh, it gave me uh, an excuse for listening to one of my own recordings. Um, it is an absolutely fabulous opera. And in fact, I cannot understand why it isn't in the in the repertoire. It's the, the quality of it, the musical quality of it is extraordinarily high. It's, um, it was actually the last opera of Donizetti that was um, premiered in his lifetime. And it's, so it's a very late work for him, poor man before he descended into syphilitic craziness. Um, it was, um, it has all the hallmarks of his late style, wonderful orchestration, much better than the orchestration of earlier. So colorful and expert. It's very expert. We have to remember that Donizetti was, a, was an excellent conductor, no, well known con as a conductor. He conducted the premiere of Nabucco, for example, and Verdi was thrilled that Donizetti was conducting it. Um, and you can tell, as a conductor, you know that Donizetti was a conductor because it is always conductible. <laughs> there's, there's, it's an interesting thing, but composers who've never conducted sometimes pose problems which are almost insoluble for conductors of ensemble or trying, you know, getting between different sections and different tempi and so on. 
And um, it's also extremely interesting from a dramatic point of view, the, the three main protagonists are all of them in their different ways, sympathetic characters, which is quite unusual. Um, they are the soprano, the tenor and the baritone. The, the soprano is the heroine, obviously, and the tenor is her lover who is jilted at the altar at the last minute because um, her, her father has been told that she cannot possibly marry anybody except the king of Cyprus, Lusignano. And Lusignano is the baritone who she's forced to marry, but who turns out to be an extremely noble and selfless person. And um, the tenor, who could be extremely cross about being jilted, of course, um, also behaves extremely well and um, becomes... Uh, a, pr a protector and helper for Lusignano in battle. So this is the baddies, of course, of the two bases. Well, uh, really, one base is really bad, Mocenigo, and um, the father, who's feeble because he gives in. <laughs> yes, and um, so it's an interesting opera because normally you would expect the baritone to be the baddie, but he isn't. So the music... It tends towards the very, um, the very tender a lot of the time. Um, and there are some really, really wonderful melodies in it. M memorable. The, 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 me the melody at the end of the duet of uh, the, the soprano and the tenor, Caterina and Gerardo, is really wonderful, heart-melting, memorable. It's fantastic. But there are also great dramatic moments. The, it's an extremely varied piece. Um, so I was thrilled to hear it again, and I thought I might even listen to it again. Um, the, the cast is absolutely tip-top. I mean, first-rate. There are, there are actually only five major characters and then there are two comprimari or three comprimari but we have one a tenor comprimario uh, doing both of those roles um the wonderful loic felix who is yes well he has a beautiful voice but you don't always get with tenors of that sort um and the main the main uh, protagonists are uh carmen giannatasio colin lee the tenor and troy cook the baritone, and they are fantastic in it. Carmen was one of a line of extremely um, interesting and extraordinary divas that we, and Patrick first, of course, found for Opera Rara. And um, all of the people, all of these divas, have this extraordinary imagination as well as the right kind of voice, but this extraordinary imagination which you need to encompass roles of this type, which to make them live. And after all, we're trying to make the, the operas live again. So I think this opera is certainly unjustly neglected. It's more unjustly neglected than most. We obviously, all the, the calls you made are of unjustly um, neglected operas, but some are more unjustly neglected than others, a bit like Animal Farm, really. Um, and the orchestra playing is wonderful. It's the first recording that we made with the, uh, the BBC Symphony Orchestra. And I remember, because they, they've never played this sort of music before, and when, I, when we started rehearsing it, the first session started rehearsing it, they were, I could tell that they were sort of thinking, oh, this is going to be rum ti tam da 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 And they soon realised this was absolutely not the case. And they loved the music. And they were, they were also, as often happens with orchestra, slightly dreading that the singers might, you know, sing out of tune and be out of time all the time. It's not undisciplined, in other words. But this is a sort of idea that orchestral players have about singers that you often have to kick out of them quite often. Um, but this was absolutely the opposite of the case. They're extremely fine singers, extremely disciplined, 
there was never a, wasn't a single problem of, uh, of that ilk. So they had a wonderful time, and I think you can hear that on the recording. I think you can hear their love of what they were doing and some really exquisite playing, particularly the principal flute and principal clarinet. I mean, who they played, often play melodies in octaves and so on. And they do it really marvellously. So, and there are two endings. Oh, that's something I nearly forgot. There are two endings. And um, one of them is a kind of, it's actually the first ending, the first one he wrote and was at the first premiere was done. It's a is a slightly conventional, dramatically conventional um, cabaletta, moderato cabaletta, so not too showy, but yeah, it's definitely a, a kind of showpiece for the soprano, which it ends, ends the opera, um, saying, OK, I'll rule when her husband's died and her lover's gone off back to be a night hospitaller in Rhodes. So likely. Um, and she says, well, I'll rule, I'll be noble, I'll put up with life and rule Cyprus. Um, and the second ending, which is much more interesting, is the death of her husband and the, and the sadness for her for the death of her husband. And, and it just ends with the, a, a duet, a slow duet for the two of them. And for me, that is a more interesting ending, actually, though the music of the Camaletta, the, the first ending, is very fun and very, yes, it's a strong, a very strong piece. So you can choose which ending to end with. Um, yes, all I can say is don't miss it. It's here at 50% off. Buy it now. It's lovely to present this opera, and I hope you all... Buy it if you don't have it already and enjoy it. Thank you.